thousand dollars a year to throw a baseball? I wouldn't give a big six cents for his experience, Pat. <laughs> Do you ever sit and ponder, sit and wonder, sit and think why we're here and what this life is all about? So you're bringing a one-man show with a no-name actor about a baseball player that nobody has any idea or remembers. And you're bringing baseball into the theater. Well, good luck. This should be good. When you hit the cards under the table, when you dump from the bottom of the deck, when the trademark was the gun shoots, so you don't. You can learn very little from a victory, but you can learn everything. Christy Mathewson was the most famous person at the time in the world. I kind of think, just like John McGraw and Christy Mathewson, I don't know what brought us together, but it was something that was just a perfect fit. Greatest person I've ever worked with in my entire career. There are no close players. Man's on the rally safe. Man's on ball or strike. Pitch is out of ball or strike. An umpire who's a good man, knows his business, is always right. No close plays. The play can either run, 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 run. Bonehead, extra bonehead. Whew, what the heck was that? And he was gone. I had played, you know, ball at UCLA, not very well. And I still loved the game, but I was now a professional actor, and my dad who is an educator, found an old book that Christy Mathewson wrote in 1912, Pitching in a Pinch, and that started the whole journey. Life's a very funny proposition, after all. We have two acts. We have Christy playing 25, 30 characters. Here, you can begin by getting rid of these. They won't play on my ball club. Why, those men cost me four. I love creating the illusion that the audience is there with Christy Mathewson for a whole evening, and by the time it's over, they're asking questions. Probably nobody can play this like he can play it. Now, if they could, we would have to, the script would have to close that portion because he takes questions and answers as Christy Mathewson and as I think he said, he's not been stumped in 30 years. When Arthur buzzed Kramer, sat down at lunch counter one day, the waiter recognized him and said, Hey, Buzz, how do you throw your famous spitball? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll show you, he said Raymond. And he walked over to the pool table, he picked up a snooker ball, let two fingers, kicked his leg high into the air, and hurled that spear through the front plate glass window.
there's always this reaction of, my goodness, I had no idea. I didn't even know who this person was. And so it's really gratifying because literally every single night, I know that it's one more button on being a success in that modest way. Angle Day ruled that even though he had not seen the play in question, Fred Merkel was indeed out at second base as a result of the forced play. Therefore, under Rule 59, Moose McCormick's run did not count, and the game was a tie. Suspended due to darkness. <laughs> it is a heartfelt tale about this life on a baseball platform. And it's those people who get dragged, let's say, by their husband or wife to the theater and they didn't want to go. Those are the folks that I find after the show want to stay around and let you know because they enjoyed it even more than anybody else. It was the largest crowd in history to ever attempt to see any event. There were 250,000 people outside the park during the game. It's about a real hero who considers himself not a hero, a real good human being. After it's over, and I've done it for 1,500 people, and I've done it for two, literally two people in the audience. It's the same amazing experience for me, sharing this person with them, as it is for them getting to know this person. There's no show like this, and there never will be. Whatever your idea is of what it is this evening with this baseball player, it's not that. Well, they issued a free pass to Shaw, so who comes up with the bases loaded and two outs? The pitcher, Eddie Tinkoff, pulled out the cannon. You should not be that stupid. They were the only ones in the World Series. I was with this team that is still in the World Series. That's my answer. We can therefore come to no other conclusion than that the New York Club lost the well earned victory as a result of a stupid play by one of its members. The game is an, is an official 1-1 tie. If it has any bearing on the final league standings at the end of the season, it'll be replayed in its entirety. We ended the season in a tie for first place with the Chicago Cubs. As NPR quoted, a top 10 play. Clive Barnes, a perfect pitch. Do not miss this show. This is a guy who made or broke every show on Broadway for 50 years. And he said he had never seen anything like it in his days in the theater. And that was pretty special. I'll tell you what you can do. You can take me out to the ball. Game. <laughs>